Uh, good morning, huh? welcome to this short show, sh short interview. And today we'll be talking to a special guest. His name is Vic. And he'll be speaking a little bit about a subject which is close to his heart, which is Kairos. So we'll be learning about Kairos this morning. So welcome Vic to this short interview that we'll be having. Hi Willie. So can you tell me something about yourself? Uh, well, I'm um, 76 years old. I have uh, five children, 15 grandkids, a uh, great grandchild. Um, and um, I lead a, a blessed life. I've got a wonderful wife that I've married twice. Uh, um, okay. And I'm still working full time, so oh, yeah. there you go. That's right. You just turned 76 last a few days ago and you're still That's working. Right. Yes. Okay, right. uh, going on to our topic, the main topic this morning, we'll be talking about Kairos. So what is Kairos in general? Can you tell us something about it? Well, Kairos Prison Ministry Australia is part of um, is part of Kairos Prison Ministry International, and um, Kairos actually means um, it's it's actually one of the it's actually one of the Greek it's one of the Greek names for time. You know, there's Kronos, which is which is that time, and um, but Kairos is like the time for something to happen. Um, you know, we can sort of call it God's time, but a, an example of Kairos time is like when a lady's having a, a baby, uh, the doctor can say the baby is due on the 5th of April, yes. which is Kronos time. Okay. But when the baby actually arrives, is Kairos time. It's actually time for the baby to arrive. So mm -hmm. the way we see it, it's actually time for a change at God's time, a time for something to happen, you know? Wow, amazing. Yeah. Well, you mentioned that this group or organization is uh, here in Australia, but is, is it something that you can find in other countries as well? Um, yes, I think so. I'm not too sure how many countries it's in, but it certainly uh, started in the United States. Okay. And it's been going in Australia since about... Um, 1999, I think. Wow, okay. Um, All right, now let, let's talk about how you were involved with this this group. Like, how did you get yourself involved with Kairos in the first place? Well, Kairos, it was less complex when I got into it, but Kairos these days is a ministry for Kairos Inside, which is a ministry for, in you know, uh, inmates, or they call them participants or residents, in the prison. Yes. Um, and there's Kairos Outside, which is a ministry for um, family and loved ones, like partners of those in prison. And then there's Kairos Torch, which is a ministry for uh, for youth, like uh, youth detention centres and that yes. sort of thing, you know, yes. juvenile, juvenile justice. Um, but I, I've been involved in Kairos Inside and that sort of got two main parts where um, we go into the prison for a week or maybe four days and have an intensive course on Christianity and we prepare uh, that, you know, like it's a lay ministry and so people prepare talks. Um, we form table families, we prepare uh, meals for these people. You know, we really share them with love and the motto of Kairos is listen, listen, love, love. So that's the important thing and it's such an important lesson in everyday life. It's a way to make friends, not yes. to talk. But to listen. listen yeah. um, sometimes, yeah, I, I agree with you. Listening would be even more helpful than giving advice. Yeah, like, well, was there any specific person who brought you into this Kairos state? Yeah, well, there was two friends. There was a neighbour of mine. Like, seriously, I didn't want to. I didn't want to participate. Yeah, yeah. that's the truth of the matter. <laughs> I had an next door neighbour yes. who was involved with Kairos, and for years he. He invited me to be part of it, and I wasn't interested. And I thought, well, 
too hard, I'm a shift worker, it's too big yeah. a commitment, and blah, 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 blah. The truth of the matter is I didn't want to do it. Yeah. And finally there was another friend who desperately needed, said he desperately needed a musician because we, we, get, we sing, you know, we, we, we get these guys to sing, uh, which is a very important part of the ministry as well, singing together. Uh, yes. Um, but um, so I, I said I said no, but in the end I, I realised it was just a question of am I willing or not. It's not yeah. whether it's easy to do, which wasn't easy for me to do, but it's a matter of whether I'm willing to do it or not. And I, and I was willing, yes. Okay, that's, that's right. Well, well, let's talk about some of your experiences in serving in Kairos. Like, how, how long have you been serving in Kairos? Maybe ten, five years. Ten? I started in two thousand and three. Wow, two thousand and three. Um, okay. Yeah, so it's been been a while. Been a long road, and there is a lot of, you know, God's blessed me with a lot of amazing memories. You know. Yes. You know, I have a lot of stories, and and a lot, a lot of how I've changed, you know, it's changed me. I mean, you go there thinking that you're going to teach, but really we're there to learn, you know. Yeah, that's right. Uh, okay. Yeah, that, like sometimes we think that we're going to change someone, but what really happens is we're the one being changed and whenever we help others. Very much so, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I remember you were saying something about the governor, or however you call him, or maybe he's one of the head in the prison. Well, can you tell us something about that story? Well, one night in winter time, um, like the other part of the, the uh, Kairos is, is that we have what we used to call a journey. They keep changing the terms, but we used to call it the journey. And so every fortnight we'd, we'd go into the prison and we'd encourage the guys. We, we'd actually, the, the aim was to establish a Christian and to encourage a Christian community in the prison and to give them sort of the tools and the confidence to, to but anyway we were, it was winter time and so we were leaving, we were in the dark in the car park and the governor came through and he said that he just wanted to encourage us not to give up on what we're doing yes. he wanted to encourage us not to count heads, yes. not to count numbers because he said that one changed life is generations of changed lives. Wow. And, and it's the same in our lives, in our family lives as well, because, um, you know, a loving, godly family has that impact and, and um, a family, is a, a criminal family tends to yeah. produce. Yeah. Like we think that we're not doing much, but in reality, even just one person who'd get affected or who'd change, that would mean a lot. That's really. right, so that's right, yeah. Even a small change would be significant. Uh, I remember you even mentioned about this this guy who, this rough guy, but his life has changed. I, I forgot his name, but can you tell us about the story? Oh, well, there were so many whose life changed, but the very first person that was my guest, like yeah. when we go in for the four days or so, uh, you're given a, a, a guest to sort of look after really to see that uh, you don't sit with them but you talk to them originally and then you just catch up with them to see how they're going yeah. but anyway so they call out a name and and this this man's like he's an, he, his christian name was J, like jay i'll just call him jay, yeah, jay yeah. um it was justin really but um called out a name and I, I thought what am I going to say yeah. to a, a prison? I was nervous, what am I going to say? <laughs> yeah, of course. And this man approached me and he said, look my name is Justin so and so, I suppose you've heard of me. He was the angriest looking guy I've ever seen in my life. He had, he had two furrows down, yeah. down the forehead yeah. and uh, he had his singlet on and he was a, a, a gym junkie, you know, yes. he had the big muscles and he had a Grim Reaper tattoo that he pointed yeah. at me. And he had his brother and his names tattooed on his wrists and every time he mentioned his brother he crossed his wrists. And, uh, and the truth of the matter was that his younger brother died of a drug overdose and he wasn't there for him. Yeah. And all he told me for days was, everyone blames me, everyone yeah. blames me. Yeah. And he was, that's what was so angry, in fact, he was, he went into prison this time because he was that angry, he went down the wrong side of the barriers down Mount Oosley near Wollongong yeah. and took out the first car that came the other way. 
and smashed up his own legs as well. Um, but on the last, the second last day of our week, we have a day of forgiveness teaching, and we're encouraged to make lists of those that we need to forgive and to, and pray about it. In those days, we used to spend a lot of time with them, and so in the dark, outside, we gathered around and get table families, and we put those lists in a in a garbage bin put our arms around each other, somebody prayed, and then somebody lit the list and watched them burn. And then Justin just took off. He just jumped up. He was dancing around, laughing. And I knew that man for six months, and everybody was his brother. Wow. Uh, so he was still a rogue in a way, but he'd gone from somebody that was angry yes. and so bitter about letting his brother down yeah. um, that he'd now he'd actually been freed from that burden and now he was able to love people and he did he was he was a caring person he was he didn't turn into a choir boy yeah or a Sunday school teacher yeah but he was a pleasure to be around and yeah, yeah. we were just it's a big change actually and that's just, that's just one life of the probably hundreds if not thousands of lives which you, you guys have touched with, with the, the ministry that you're doing okay well let's talk about how how people can help let's say if somebody wants to get involved well, what can they do do you have like a list of, of activities on, on, on March yeah, well, at the, pre at the very present time, uh, because of COVID, yes. we're not allowed in New South Wales prison. So right. our program has been suspended for more than 12 months okay. now, which is a great shame. Yes. But um, the truth of the matter is that the volunteers in our organisation yes. are, you know, I'm 76 and, and that's sort of, that's not even old. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Like we have older people. Uh -huh. um, so, and no organisation is going to survive in, in that condition. Yep. Um, so it's, it's, it is very difficult to get much younger people because they're overcommitted, you know, with a lot yes. of debt, young families, so on and so forth. Yes. But we do need younger people coming through, younger than us anyway. Okay, okay. Uh, yes. um, and certainly, um, uh, we're always looking for volunteers that are that are willing to make that commitment the 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 commitment of going in it's difficult there's the there's a fair bit of work involved but once you're in the prison um it, it can be quite addictive because it, it as i said it's a life-changing experience that's right dude. to do it you know i'm not saying there's other experiences aren't just as life-changing but i know that it is a life-changing experience and and people sort of become like chorus junkies you know they always want to volunteer and in fact there's almost like rules to actually say that you, you can't just you need a break and you need to be replaced you know you can't just yeah keep doing it forever because then who who else is going to do it you know That's when right. when you when you aren't able to do it anymore so um in our own district there's 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 manus prison okay yeah. which is a minimum security prison yeah and there's Juni Prison, which is a large prison and becoming larger, and it's actually medium security, and they've got a maximum security prison as well as part of that. Um, so we've got two different committees, two different groups, yeah. but they're both looking for volunteers, um, especially for... Uh, musicians are very welcome okay. because um, music and singing plays a big part in bringing people That's right. together. Um, you know, making it a community. What That's we what we try to do is to take like an example of the ideal church into yes. the prison, yep. where we've actually spent a lot of time together. So we've ironed out our differences. So we yes. love each other, yes. support each other. We go in there and we include them. Um, in, in smaller families and then in a larger group, in the larger group, singing together and, and so on. Um, but um, 
talking about specifically um, anybody that is interested, uh, there's a website yep. and there's contacts for all the different areas, the different prison areas. So um, always looking for interested people. And there's people that do get around doing presentations around the churches. In fact, there was a couple of presentations in Wagga, yes. the Baptist Church, and one of the and St Paul's in Anglican today. Yes. Um, but the web the website KPMA. Yep. yep. It's Coros Prison Ministry Australia. Yes. Yes. And it's got all the different prisons and contact names that go with that. Okay. Yeah. We're almost at, towards the end of our short interview. Do you have any last words before we say, we say goodbye? Um, well, Kairos has been a wonderful experience for me. Not only the experiences in the prison, but also the friends that you form in the Kairos organisation. Yes. Um, because it is... Um, the thing about church fellowship is that it, especially amongst men, it really is fellowship when you're doing something together okay. with, a, with a, a common purpose. Yes. It, it's, it, that's, that's, that's what brings you together, like a football team or something. Yes. That's what bonds you together, really. Yes. You can, you know, otherwise it's theory yes, that yes. you bond together, you know. Okay. Like even us doing music together. Yeah, right. It is true. Yes. It is true. Okay, so thank you very much for giving your time to share about Karis and we hope that people who might see this video will be able to be encouraged to join the ministry and be able to help in the prisons as well. So thank you, you have a nice day. That's great, thanks Wally. So